Hello and welcome to a tutorial for loading a Cheetah 3D file into an iOS project. Before you can load your Cheetah 3D file into your iOS project, you need to prepare your models. So in Cheetah 3D, you want to make sure you do all your UV unwrapping and texture mapping. And when you feel like that's uh, accomplished, then you want to burn your transforms. After that, triangulate everything because OpenGL ES only understands triangle data. And any parameter styled objects must be made editable and triangulated. So I'll give you a brief demonstration in Cheetah 3D of all of those concepts. Here you see a triangulated model of a kangaroo. Now I'm going to create a polygonal object. We'll select this ball. And um, notice that you have a bunch of properties uh, associated with this ball. And uh, take a look at its icon. The icon is not a set of vertices like it is with the kangaroo. You've got that green icon that matches the icon you see in the menu and that tells you that this is it may be a political polygonal object but it's it's um, it's created with parameters those properties that you adjust in order to modify this model and um, the real problem with this is that it's made of quads as I zoom in here you can see that this object is all quads and uh, that's not good. It's not going to work for OpenGL. So we have to fix that first by double clicking on this icon and that changes it into um, a normal poly polygonal object that doesn't have those uh, editable properties. And once you've done that, of course, that allows you to uh, triangulate it. And now it's a set of triangles. And that's something that will work in OpenGL. I'll, I'll leave the ball in the project for now. And I'll save it. So, uh, skipping over the subject of UV unwrapping and texture mapping, which uh, you, you can figure out in a, or find another tutorial for that, um, you'll notice I triangulated everything and triangulated parameter styled objects, but what about this burn transforms uh, requirement? So let me demonstrate that. You'll notice that when I created this sphere it was centered in world space at position zero. If I move it, say I don't want it to be sitting uh, below a ground plane, then I might move it to where I've positioned the kangaroo on the ground plane. And you'll notice that the Y value in the position is now changed, it is no longer zero. So we can select the object and go to Tools, Coord Coord System, and we have a new panel here called Coord System where we can select the object and you'll notice here that it says burn transform click OK and now the position transform is completely zeroed out now the object when loaded on iOS will come in at that position I'm guessing the vertices have been rewritten for that new position because my loader is definitely disregarding all transforms. So moving on, what do you do in uh, Xcode to get ready to uh, load this file? Well first you need to add this file to your project. So let's do that. Go to Xcode and you'll notice we don't have a Cheetah 3D file here. So we're going to add it by saying add files to and we can select the Cheetah 3D file 
and you'll see that it came in right here. And you'll also see that when you click on it, there's nothing really interesting about what you're seeing. You're not able to uh, see anything in, um, of value. And that's because uh, Xcode isn't aware yet of what kind of file you've imported into your project. So over here in the uh, file inspector, you have a file type dropdown. From there, you want to scroll to property list binary. Select that. Now, clicking away and clicking back to that file, you'll see that it shows up as a plist. And this should look familiar to you because in your supporting files of every iOS project, you have something called the loader demo info prelist. Well, mine's called loader demo, but it's the info dot prelist. P -list. And uh, now your 3D file is a plist. And what's interesting is uh, this key here called objects. When we open up that array, we have an array of objects. Item 0 is the camera data. Item 1 is the kangaroo. We open up item 1 and go to the key name. The value for the key of name is kangaroo. So we know that item 1 is our kangaroo. Item 2, we look at the name and it's ball just as we left it. If I switch back over to Cheetah 3D, you'll notice that these names here, exactly as they appear in the object browser in Cheetah 3D, those names are here under this key name for each of those objects. And that's important because the loader is going to reference those names. So we've added the file to our project. We've set the correct file type in the file inspector. And now we need to add common.h, cheetah3d loader.h, and cheetah3d loader.m to the project. Uh, well, I've gone ahead and done that already. So you can see those three files are here. And what do those files do? Oh, and, and you want to make sure this last point is very important. Add the import directive to your view controller. So switching back over to Xcode, let's go to our view controller.m and scroll, uh, well it's probably in .h, there it is. Um, this is important to add to your view controller header so that um, these files are loaded. Now in Cheetah 3D loader.h I already import common.h so you don't have to worry about that. Just uh, in your view controller header, make sure you import the loader and it will take care of getting common.h loaded when it needs it. So what does the loader do? Well, it reads the file contents into an NS dictionary for searching. It searches for the model object to be loaded by name, reads data four bytes at a time into new arrays, and from those arrays it calculates the surface normals, and using the surface normals it calculates the vertex normals. These steps, these, these uh, calculation steps for the normals have to be done because Cheetah 3D's file does not contain any normal data. Uh, so apparently Cheetah 3D itself does this kind of calculation when it reads reads uh, one of its files. And then finally the loader bundles all that information into a structure and sends that over to the GPU and it captures the buffer names as integers. Those integers are returned by the GPU. So let's take a look first at uh, common.h. Um, it has it defines structures needed for sending data to the GPU. This is this is the this kind of well this is the map for how the data is bundled up and sent over to the, to the GPU. There are several structures like this position vector and normal vector and they all feed into um, this mesh vertex which is ultimately what gets sent over to the GPU. Now in my loader I've commented out texture chords 0 and 1, 
those are going to be added later but they're commented out for now now the cheetah 3d loader h here here's the entirety of it this this shows you the uh, instance variables you need for handling data sent to and from the GPU. What's also defined here are the, the function, uh, these function definitions that you'll see in the implementation file. But uh, this, is, this is the interface. And, and one important item here is the jazz file name so that when this class is instantiated, you initialize it with a file name so that it points to the Cheetah 3D file that you're interested in. And out of that, when you, when you actually ask it to load the, the model, which is this, this second uh, function, that's when these other properties get filled in. And after it, uh, your model gets pushed over to the GPU, that's when the GPU returns a vertex buffer object integer name and the same with the vertex array buffer. Now using the Cheetah 3D loader is pretty simple. You declare that you're going to use this class and then you instantiate it right here and when you do you select or you indicate a file name. You just type in um, in our case if you if we go over to Xcode you'll see level1.jas right here. When you're using this, when you instantiate it, you would type level1. You would omit the .jas. You don't need that because the loader uh, is already familiar with this being a, a Cheetah 3D file. The next line, so th that's line one. Line two tells this newly instantiated object to go ahead and load a model and you type in the name right here where it says object name you would type in kangaroo if you were going to load the kangaroo out of this file or you would type in ball if you were going to load the ball out of this file and then later on GL draw arrays um, is going to draw your triangles and it's going to do so and it needs the triangle count like exactly how many uh, triangles is a drawing and that is returned when you when you after you do the load in this line this structure gets filled in so you'll be able to pass that over to the GPU and so um, let's go ahead and do a demo and I'll walk you through those same um, same lines so over here uh, in the view controller dot M we've uh, let's see I've got um, right here the Cheetah 3D forward declaration and uh, as we move down here I've commented out some of the stuff in Apple's because this is this app that I'm showing you here is just um, taking Apple's starter package the starter project for an OpenGL game and I'm commenting out some of the things that aren't important to, to us like um, the Apple starter project shows two cubes rotating one cube being done with GL kit and the other with OpenGL S2, OpenGL ES 2.0 um, so I've commented out uh, the cube that's being rendered by GL kit and and these lines especially here that I've highlighted are actually being handled by the loader so we don't need to call that we can't call those because uh, this vertex array uh, and this GQ vertex data is uh, really being defined up here. But here's the GQ vertex data. Uh, we don't want to load that cube, so we I commented those out, and instead here are those two lines um, that I described, where I've typed in level one for the file name, and then kangaroo for the model that I want out of that file. Now there are other places where you need to do a little tweaking, uh, like uh, as in teardown GL. When you do the teardown for OpenGL, you have to get uh, those integers that OpenGL that the GPU gave you when you loaded the model. You have to use those integers to delete them in the correct order, as shown here. And then later on, when you're drawing, here's here's that GL draw arrays command where you have my model and the triangle count. 
Um, there are other things you can play with. The um, model view matrix. Um, I like to play around with that. Get you know straighten that out so that you don't have a cube rotating in a funny way. Um, but let's go ahead and load it uh, we'll, or run it, and you can see the kangaroo. And there it is. Now I can switch to the ball instead of the kangaroo, which is oh, right here. So if I type ball and run that, we'll see the ball. And there it is. Now it's it's orange because textures in OpenGL are handled in the shaders and so I'm not with my loader I'm not reading texture values out of the file because I'll be writing shaders to do the texturing of the objects so I hope this uh, was informative for you I hope this uh, was helpful and uh, I'm going to continue to make changes to my uh, loader and uh, you're welcome to uh, send me uh, your comments and questions in email or uh, via the blog and um, I, I don't have a lot of time to be social about this kind of thing so I'm, I'm not sure that I can respond instantly but um, I'll, I'll try to respond to uh, any questions and of course um, any of the code that I've demoed here, uh, I'm sure there, there are people out there who can open up my project, tear it apart, and, and make it better. Um, I don't claim to be an Objective-C expert, uh, so I'm more than, uh, more than open to anybody's suggestions for, for improving the loader. Uh, but at least this gets uh, the basics of your model into... Xcode and, and it's a nice starting point for someone who is like me new to OpenGL on a mobile device and trying to trying to make that work it's it's a uh, it can be frustrating t to uh, at least even get to this point for a lot of people so um, enjoy and thanks a lot